This video simply features a number of clips that I selected from Pence's speech and Trump's speech in Tulsa, Oklahoma during the latest rally. I left out a lot of things that people have talked about ad nauseum and just left in some things that, that just kind of stuck out to me. And I have a little bit of commentary between them as well. Here's the first clip. President Trump rebuilt our military. He restored the arsenal of democracy, and this president signed the largest increase in our national defense since the days of Ronald Reagan. This whole line of thinking is confusing to me. Why do we need to spend tons more on the military? We already spend more on our military than any other country, you know, and we're supposedly Supposedly, Trump is trying to not have us be involved in a bunch of needless wars, needless conflicts in other countries. Well, if that's the case, why, why increase the spending on the military? It just doesn't make any sense. Well, President Trump got us out of the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. That's always been a weird one to me. Why is working with Iran a horrible thing? But working with North Korea is considered great. And this president, from the first day of this administration, has stood for law and order and stood with the incredible men and women of law enforcement at every level. Yes, even the corrupt ones, apparently. When rioters were destroying property in cities across the country, Joe Biden issued a press release. President Donald Trump sent in the National Guard. Regardless of how you feel about the National Guard being brought in to curb the rioting, what was Joe Biden supposed to do about it? What kind of power does he have right now that he could have done anything? And we'll find ways to move forward together. But one thing we're not going to do, we're not going to defund the police. Not now, not ever. While I agree we shouldn't defund the police, I didn't think this was something the federal government handled to begin with. I couldn't be more proud to be vice president for a president who stands without apology for the right to life. Until after you're born, and then who cares, right? Did you know before we had a single coronavirus case in the United States, President Donald Trump closed down all travel from China. He put the health of America first. Actually, the first coronavirus case in the United States was confirmed on January 21st. Trump implemented the travel ban to China on January 31st, and it was actually implemented on the 2nd of February. Having said that, media still went after Trump, basically saying that he was racist for doing a travel ban. And we will always put the health of America first. That's a pretty big gathering of people who are mostly not wearing masks, and there's no social distancing, and it's indoors. I stand before you today to declare the silent majority is stronger than ever before. He could be right there. So we passed VA choice. So if you're a veteran for years and years, they've wanted to do it for almost 50 years. We got it done. We get a lot of things done. And so if you're a veteran and you have to wait in line for one week, Two weeks, three weeks, five weeks, seven weeks, two months. What happens is you go outside, you get a private doctor, you get fixed up, and they pay your bill. We take care of the bill. We take care of the bill, and you get immediate service. It's never happened before, and our approval rating at the VA is now 91 percent. That's how good it is. <laughs> Trump got rid of the expiration date on it, but that's about it. How about the CNN anchor, you know, did a little shave job in the head, which is fine. And he's standing in front of a building, 
So I think so very peaceful here. Very, and the building is, it looks like the biggest fire I've ever seen. The whole town is burning. It look, it's like the biggest fire. And he said, things are very good here, Anderson. I think it's good. I think it's good. He's a wonderful people, Anderson. He's got a point there. That is somewhat what CNN and MSNBC did. But how about Seattle? Isn't that great? So they take over a big chunk of a city called Seattle. I mean, we're not talking about some little place. We're talking about Seattle. Have you ever been to Seattle? They took over a big chunk, and the governor, who's radical left, I wouldn't call Inslee radical left, but he does give in to the demands of the radical left pretty easily. He does seem to lack a backbone to do what's right, you know? All of these places I talk about are Democrat. You know that. Every one of them. Every one of them. And I have an offer out. I said, anytime you want, we'll come in, we'll straighten it out in one hour or less. Now, I may be wrong. But it's probably better for us to just watch that disaster. I flew in with some of our great congressmen who we're going to introduce in a second, and I said to him, Congressman, what do you think? I can straighten it out fast? Should we just go in? No, sir. Let it simmer for a little while. Let people see what radical left Democrats will do to our country. Again, the Democrats with power generally aren't radical leftists, but they do seem to be giving in to the demands of the radical leftists. Here's the bad part. When you, test of, when you do testing to that extent, you're going to find more people, you're going to find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. We'll probably never know if he was joking there or not. The unhinged left-wing mob is trying to vandalize our history, desecrate our monuments, our beautiful monuments, tear down our statues and punish, cancel, and persecute anyone who does not conform to their demands for absolute and total control. We're not conforming. That's why we're here, actually. I mean, we can definitely see that leftward thinking dominates social media, dominates Hollywood, dominates most news, you know, but I don't know if things will get as extreme as what Trump is saying, where people will be actually prosecuted for wrong think. I, I sure hope not. But, uh, you know, it does seem like a bit of fear-mongering. This cruel campaign of censorship and exclusion violates everything we hold dear as Americans. They want to demolish our heritage so they can impose their new oppressive regime in its place. They want to defund and dissolve our police departments. Think of that. The problem right now is that so many Democrats are, you're, you're bending over backwards to appease the far left. Oh, we, we need to be open-minded and consider all of these different viewpoints. Yeah, no matter how far to the left it is, no matter how radical it is, if it's on the left, you're, you're going to listen to it. And then if anything is even slightly to the right, you say, that's far right. You're a white supremacist. Two days ago, leftist radicals in Portland, Oregon, ripped down a statue of George Washington and wrapped it in an American flag and set the American flag on fire. Democrat, Dem all Democrat. Everything I tell you is Democrat. It's far left, but it's certainly not a Democrat thing. Now, are Democrats putting up with it and making excuses for it? Yes. But they're not the ones that are doing it. The people that call themselves Democrats are not the ones doing it. 
And you know, we ought to do something, Mr. Senators. We have two great senators. We ought to come up with legislation that if you burn the American flag, you go to jail for one year. One year. What a hypocrite. He tries to claim that he's for freedom of speech, and then he pushes something like that. You know, they talk about freedom of speech, and I'm a big believer in freedom of speech, but that's desecration. That's a terrible thing they do. So desecration is his argument. So are there any other symbols that if you desecrate them, uh, you should be arrested for it? This is absurd. Desecration, it's, it's a piece of material. It's a piece of cloth. Does it have meaning to it? Yes. But, I mean, this is going down the line of thinking of, you know, maybe we should make blasphemy illegal. Oh, no, you, you took the Lord's name in vain. I mean, I just don't like the precedent this sets. We used to have things. We don't have them anymore because we want to be so open, so everything. And look what happens. We should have legislation that if somebody wants to burn the American flag and stomp on it, but just burn it, they go to jail for one year, okay? He's getting quite an applause for that. That's concerning to me. In Seattle, the Democrat mayor and the Democrat city council have surrendered control of six city blocks to an anarchist map. These are anarchists. These are not protesters. You listen to the fake news, they say, oh, the protesters were lovely. Could you imagine if people just even slightly to the right tried to take over Seattle? They'd have machine guns out to get them. But these people can take over the city. Look at what they've done to business people that have spent years and years building their business, and now they're wiped out. Take it away. Governor Inslee ought to get his act together. Get in there. I'll help you. I'll do whatever you want. I'm waiting for a call. I would love to do it. I would love to do it. It'll take, it'll take less than an hour, and it'll all be over with, and you'll have your city back. There have already been a number of shootings that have happened at Chaz, Chop, and it's probably going to have to get a lot worse before anything gets done about it. Hopefully, Trump won't have to put his foot down. Hopefully, something will get done about it before then. But we'll see. Joe Biden is a helpless puppet of the radical left. And he's not radical left. I don't think he knows what he is anymore. But he was never radical left. But he's controlled by the radical left, and now he's really controlled. His campaign staff even donated a lot of money to bail out rioters, looters, and arsonists who ravaged Minneapolis. Unfortunately, I somewhat agree with him about Biden being a puppet. And it is true, I looked it up, about some of his staffers donating that money. We will never kneel to our national anthem or our great American flag. We will stand proud and we will stand tall. It just seems that Trump doesn't even want to acknowledge that there are some negative things still going on in this country, that there are still some negative patterns left over. They want to crush religious liberty. They don't want religion. Except Islam because it's considered an oppressed group. Silence religious believers. Indoctrinate your children with hateful and vicious lies about our country. Yes, because apparently the things that we did to the Native Americans and slavery were okay. We shouldn't look down on that. We shouldn't look at that realistically because, you know, to look at it realistically would be telling lies about this country, right? We will protect Medicare and Social Security for our great seniors and will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. Always. Always. Yeah, he says that, but based on his past budget proposals, I'm wondering how sincere he is. We believe that children should be taught to love our country, honor our history, and always salute our great American flag. I see the benefits in teaching kids to be proud of the country they live in, but I think it's much more important 
to teach civics in school again. And we live by the words of our national motto, it will never change, in God we trust. In God we trust wasn't on any of our money until the late 1800s. It wasn't put on the rest of our money until the 1950s. It wasn't our national motto until the 1950s. Under God was not in the pledge until the 1950s during McCarthyism. Thank you, thank you, Oklahoma, thank you.